everybody. It's okay. Wait, paper two to ask the fluent as it. Hi, I am Trisha. Hello, I am 18 years old. I used to go to a lot of different high schools. If you want to know more about my high school journey, link down below. But in brief, I am a Scuola Tom Fatima High School graduate. A lot of you guys want to know what are my upcoming plans. But what I'm planning to do for my maybe A-levels or foundation, I'm also not so sure on that. It kind of depends on the scholar. And where I'm going also, it's really uncertain because once again, scholar. But I plan on doing law. I have business in mind, medic or just science. And this is like backup um, engineering. It's been a minute, so let's get into this video. Modules recommendations. I have all the list here. I'm going to read it to you. For BM, I used the module that the school provided, English as well. For Sejara, for the reading part, mainly just the textbook. The textbook is literally the only thing you need. Okay, if it's one thing that my teacher taught me throughout Form 4 and Form 5, the only way you can score Sejara is actually just to read the textbook. And then for the Latihan part, uh, my teachers back in my school they prepared like a module as well you can also find really great exercises or like questions online you search for sbp soalan or soalan mrsm agama my teacher recommended the textbook but then i was a bit rebellious and i didn't want to use the textbook i found an alternative to textbook which is the ilmu bakti buku rujukan it's the small green one if i can find a picture i'll put it here this is what it looks like and this definitely helped me throughout Form 5. Form 4, I used another book. I forgot what it's called. Is it Jago? Yeah, put a picture here. Yeah, Jago. If you were to ask me which one I like most, it's definitely the Ilmu Bhakti one. It's so compact and concise and it's so easy to read. Maths, also the school module. At Maths, also module. And fun fact, um, our teacher actually created this book with his friend. So that's pretty cool. It's really good. Check it out. Totally buy it. <laughs> For biology, other than bioscore, you can also opt for um, the success biology. That one's really good. I like that. And the textbook. With textbook, I started seeing improvement in my bio grades. Physics, also a module that my school prepared. Perhaps if it's not online, you can go to tuition centers and ask for it. A good tuition center that I would like to recommend is Ilmu Studio. Now, I used to study with a Ilmu Studio tutor. It was like a private session. I didn't go to Ilmu Studio. You can check out Ilmu Studio because I think they have great modules there. For chemistry, I also used a module prepared by the school and the textbook as well. The textbook is fine. More explanation on things. I think for sciences, right? If you really want to understand the sciences because some people find it really hard and I personally did find it hard. I think, I mean, aside from having great teachers, having great reference to refer to, it's so important. So if you're still struggling and if you still don't understand, find friends who are like super smart at these subjects and let them help you. You go to them and make them explain it to you. Show that you're willing to listen. And when they are explaining, make sure you give your full attention and ask them anything if you don't know. Because I did ask a lot of my friends, like mainly at maths, Aida Zulaika, she helped me a lot. Biology was Sufi. Physics was I know. Chemistry was Huda Hisham. So I have my specific friends helping me understand sciences and I think you should do that too. For chemistry, I arranged them accordingly, like to the chapters. But I, I like colorful things and all that kind of stuff. Some I realize some of my super smart friends they don't like colorful things. I don't know why. Maybe it just doesn't work with their brain. I'm gonna show you a comparison of how my notes improve drastically from form four to form five. Form four, this was my note, which I'm a bit messy and unorganized. And like look at that. Honey, that is crazy. I do a lot of organizing. And I also make div dividers. Dividers are so important and that's how I Take my notes. No, oh, hafalin can be broken down into two. Those there are some things that you have to hafal without understanding, and there are some things that you have to hafal 
by understanding it first. Yeah, sejarah biology. Those are simple things that you have to understand, and then when you understand, you're more likely to hafal it automatically. Okay, picture this agama, right? We have hafazan. You can't understand hafazan. If you get what I'm saying, you just have to hafal it. And how do you hafal hafazan? You repeat it all the time. Apply it to the same concept for sejarah. If you don't understand, try to read it multiple times and make another person read it to you. And then somehow, it becomes like a earworm or muscle memory or sort of thing. I forgot what the term is. But automatically, you'll start to understand. And then what I like to do generally is what Susan nak ingat that you're asking, right? Once you finish a chapter, quickly do like topic-based like exercise. That way you are more familiar to the questions and then automatically you'll just remember. For Karangan, I struggled a lot because I did not know how to generate ideas continuously. I think I should tell you something that I did earlier before you know actually improving Karangan. I would memorize maybe the first paragraph or something like that, a few sentences from the first paragraph before entering exam and I would literally write the same thing, which is bad because authenticity is the key to Karangan. You have to be authentic. But what I did to help me improve Karangan, I started to apply the concept Imbak Kup. It's not Imbak Kup for Form 4 and Form 5. This is like the Imbak Kup modified version by my teacher. If you apply Imbak Kup for your Karangan, I don't think you can write very long as like Karangan, the paragraph. So with the guideline that I have, it was easier for me to write continuously without stopping. And it helps me with, you know, generating ideas and the sentences. Aside from that, what really helped me with Karangan was the modules that my teacher provided. So for instance, my teacher used to give um, examples of phrases you can use at the beginning of the sentence or at the beginning of a paragraph. And those things really helped me because it gave me more confidence. So those phrases I have file and I use. What I think um you will come across questions yang ada chapters, chapters macam like form four lah. Then when you come across that so I learn and you tak tahu macam nak buat, first figure out what chapter is it from and then after that you terus study that chapter terus. Jangan tunda tunda. Dekat situ juga baca chapter tu, cuba faham, pasu jawab continue job you punya latihan. Some people think that I'm super great at writing. I'm not. I like to speak. I mean, I can speak, but I can't write. Find a mentor. Humble yourself, be a bit modest, and it's so tell yourself it's okay to have a mentor. Sometimes teachers are amazing mentors, but realistically, sometimes you want to be more comfortable with the person teaching us. So with Najla, she was able to tell me her ways of writing, and I tried to implement some of her advices and tips that she uses. Number two, you need to find what kind of writing style you like. So I always thought argumentative was my niche or something that I was good at, but turns out it wasn't. But in the end, after I found Najla and I switched to a new English teacher, I realized how much easier it was to score for essays when you do descriptive or narrative writing. You can get so creative with it and you can write literally long. And what I did back then, I used all the worksheet that I provided. So here is a page of just examples of ways to express feelings or emotions. Because this can come in really handy for essay writing, how to describe a stormy weather, st strong wind, and the, like in some cases, I will memorize the phrases because I can use it repetitively. You have to find first a very good book to sumbat everything lah. Like, um, like I said, I use the Bioscore, use the Success or the textbook. Tackling KBAT questions because at the end of the day, I feel like biology, they don't ask you like direct questions. They kind of ask you questions out of the box and then you have to apply what you've learned so really do a lot of latihan so at meds ni like how i master it sort of masa tengah hari kan ngantuk so i would choose to study the subject i hated most which is at meds so i remember going to class alone when everybody was at dorm this was during the weekend i would study satu satu and i went through all my papers, all my exercises, everything lah. It was just hardcore lah, memang betul-betul. And then I would take sticky note and write down money yang I tak faham and then I would refer to my friend. I didn't go to my teacher a lot 
for reference if i didn't understand something i would go to my friends because some of my friends yang memang bijak bijak memang bijak boh would go to them instead of my teacher because the teacher he was very intimidating and i feel like i get more explanation from my friends If you're still, you know, slacking off at meds, perhaps maybe the struggling right now would benefit you in the end because it did to me. So I think what you have to do now instead of keep persevering and working hard is also to be patient. Maybe God is testing you. Okay, for you guys, I still have my chemistry module and I do have a lot of acronyms in it. This is something I created and I tell a lot of my friends and it really helps them. Chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, right? So if it's hard for you to remember, you can remember it this way. Faster call Ben immediately. This is also something that I invented myself. It's from the group 18. What's it called again? Oh my god, I forgot. Okay, so we have helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon. So how you remember this? So can uh, helium can H E can so much um hi, hi, and then na is neon, argon, krypton, ta xenon, radon from ta hi. Not that reading. This is a bit nasty, but it helped, okay? In the historical development of atomic models. So how I remember the flow from the first scientist that discovered the atomic structure. John Dalton. Dayang ta rasa bera ciri. Okay, but like seriously lah, redox susah kan? I know it's susah, but macam maybe it's susah sebab you guys tak faham basics tu lagi tau. So I think you would, you should really, really take this time to understand the form for topics, electrolysis, the basics, and carbon compound. Cuba faham, duduk faham. Kau tak faham, kau faham kan? It's like that. Try and faham. Then barulah boleh faham oksidasyen, uh, reduction. Ini ada sejarah, right? The soalan putar-putar je. And usually, what you have to study for Zaria is the kebet questions because the Quebec questions are pretty hard unless you are like in the bite but you know those who are not in the bite or those who struggle in bahasa or sejarah like me I don't like sejarah okay I don't like reading not <clears throat> faham sejarah tu ya Allah like the struggle girl find someone to explain it to me so I used to have a friend her name is Huda Zulkaini this is what we would do she would like explain to me a whole chapter and I would also explain it to her and then by the end of the chapter we would Tanya, tanya. So because of her is how I started having the interest in sejarah. And yeah, we did it together and I think if it weren't, you know, for the teamwork, I wouldn't have been able to score A plus for SPM. It's hard because the highs that I got was 37 and 32 masa before SPM. Yeah, but I think one tip is memang kena faham lah sejarah tu. Susah mana pun faham lah nak. What motivated you to always study? How to stay motivated? Avoid procrastination. All this, I think what you can do is to consider a digital detox. The first step to motivation is discipline. If you consider digital detox, but you're not disciplined and you're not consistent about it, then the motivation just slacks off. So what you have to do is maybe you should plan out how long you want to stay away from social media or maybe set out rules when you can open social media okay this is something random but i just want to show you the past every exam this is what i would do tau. i would like write down all the exam punya what the subject is on every day and then after habis the exam too i would go to my planner i don't talk to my friends and then i would cross it out like this and then i would write um the expected grade or i how i feel like I did. And the minimum grade that I can write is A minus. Like I don't write B. Tapi kalau betul-betul susah then I akan tulis B lah. Not C, not D. I try to not go to there because I don't want to create the negativity in me. I actually do. Back when I was in Form 4, I guess I was being a little ambitious. Um, this is something you shouldn't do but you can do. <laughs> I mean I did it because I wasn't thinking realistically but yeah. University of California, Berkeley. But I have Trump here because he has a good quote and also because I admire his hyper-intellectualism as well as his charisma. And then from 5, I did also the same thing. We still have UC Berkeley here. 
but then I kept my options open and I have Yale here as well. I get you, I so get you. Like going into SBP, maybe perhaps any new environment, teenagers and just people, they're going through a lot of change. It's really hard to accept more change. And that's why I believe why people are sometimes cruel to new people is because at that stage of life, they're already having so many changes that they have to adapt and then you becoming the newcomer, I guess you just some sort add on the struggle. But I guess what you can do is to really just ignore those people. So try to stay with the concept with, I don't give a boop. If you're form four, even better, you just have two years with them. So you won't see them anymore. Um, quotes like this. And um, this is the planner when I entered form four. I got this at Popular. Dang. And it was only what, 21 bucks. Let me show you. I had my friends writing down a lot of notes for me. Very motivational. Um, you know, it lifts up my spirits. And I would look at him all the time. I mean, our time was basically scheduled by our teachers. So when I study is when I was instructed to study, basically 24-7. I can give you an idea of what it's like when I'm studying. Weekdays, I would consider the study routine master prep lah. So prep is usually around 9 to 10 and then I would continue a little bit at the dorm which is like 11 to 12 and then my school when I was in boarding school in between rehat and all that I would take that time to study chemistry, bio because those are like you know killer subjects. So this was five weeks to trials. Thursday my, because I studied in Johor so Thursday is like our Friday. So Thursday was like Friday. It was the last day of school of the week. And so I had more time that night, it's about prep. And so this is what I did, much like a study routine, right? So I have targets and then do BI novel character revise a little on cam, study bio, focus, study physics, plus switch. Do you play sports to keep your brain active? Now I think this question boleh refer to this quote. Apa entah? Bukan quote, ya Allah. Dalam BM, I tak ingat lah. Badan sehat otak cerk. Eh, jat 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 Otak cerdas, badan badan cerdas, otak cerdas, ha tu. I mean, I was in the athletic, but athletics in my school it wasn't a thing. But I would run pretty much every day, and I would work out afterwards. It is a hobby, something I do every petang. Personally, I enjoy studying alone, but towards SPM, I think studying in groups is a lot better because masa dalam SPM tu. Like, there wasn't a lot of time, so whenever I had something in mind or something I just don't know, I can just refer to somebody in the group. My school, we, um, the teachers would like group the students into a group of five, I think. And there was always the dominant, not the dominant, the smart one lah. So it's much more effective that way because it's efficient, saves more time. And I guess studying in group, you understand better because you have minds from different people with different perspective and different ways of understanding. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, saya faham awak punya situasi dan saya pernah melalui situasi itu. In fact, I do get this cinta monyet. I don't know what you do, would define cinta monyet as, but cinta monyet for me, it's not even cinta man, it's just like your berangan and like you just create this whole false reality of you and him in here. I don't know, fantasizing about the guy, okay, but then until at one point, just stop it because it will affect your studies. So, nak elakkan, jangan feeling sangat kot. Cuba like, tell yourself that, okay, I have value in myself. You don't need a man because you got yourself, bruh. And cinta monyet is a waste of time. Why waste time? Better waste time on studying, no, not value your time by studying at maths or chemistry or whatever. A day before SPM tu, banyak macam refreshing and also focusing on topics yang mana diorang kata spot and mana my instinct cakap. On the day of SPM itself, I only look at stuff yang I betul-betul selalu lupa and also contohnya lepas paper 1 kan and masa paper 1 tu ada satu soalan yang I lupa, concept ke or something. Then in between the break before paper tu, 
I akan tengok that part sebab I guess scared or worried that it might come out for people to don't stress yourself or don't try to like look at everything the day of SPM itself really won't be able to understand everything in that short period of time I would highly recommend for you to just eat kurma and just smile and just don't ah that's all and don't talk to people because you want to stay in the zone what you definitely have to do is rush topics yang you betul-betul tak faham this is something I really did so cuba senaraikan apa yang you tak faham lagi dan cuba cepat-cepat untuk faham tu by end of the third week nak SPM dah and then something else that you should do is start decluttering books that you don't need anymore all those exercise books that you don't use terus simpan dalam kotak and try to limit the amount of reference book that you're using at maths lah obviously at maths dengan BM kot sebab BM kan masa SPM dia punya um, pilihan senang tau I chose the number one I think Sebenarnya dia kebaikan membaca buku kot, keamalan membaca. And I remember vividly, amalan membaca buku tak akan keluar. I tak baca pun. And then the next thing you know, that came out. So thank God I macam have ideas also because of public speaking experiences. Tapi I was scared that I wasn't answering the question. Sebab the question was a statement and you had to like make the question. Alhamdulillah. What I understand, maybe betul sebab Alhamdulillah A+. Plus. At Max pula susah sebab paper 2 eh. Paper 2 tu astagfirullahaladzim. Like, I still remember the petition for 5% to make it pass kan. But wait, at Max paper 2 tu, like, I was... Ugh. Paper 1 tu, I confident sikit because I think did a lot, a lot of paper 1 tau before SPM. Being, you know, the person I am, I would memorize how it goes tau. The pattern, soalan dia and kadang-kadang soalan tu lain tapi pattern soalan tu sama tau. So, cara jawab tu sama. Paper 1 tu, even though I feel like it's hard until today, but I was very happy. Then, paper 2 tu, I macam, wow. Dah lah, I jawab probability distribution. Okay, probability distribution is senang, okay? And the soalan, astagfirullahaladzim, they twisted it. I remember, I didn't answer a, like a backup question untuk this section B kot. Sebab, it was trigo, and soalan trigo tu susah sangat. Like, I can't even do it. So, I was like, screw me, screw everybody. It's okay. And that's it for this video. I am so happy that I made it till the end because I've been procrastinating to film this video. It's currently 221 people. Oh my goodness. I just want to say good luck to all SPM candidates 2020. I understand the current situation, having to study online. But I guess one last tip that I can give to all of you is that to keep up and stay with the schedule that your school provided because get this a schedule is like a house of cards you take one out they all come tumbling down so stick with it and i think that's it that's how i got 90 plus for spm i'm tired bye <laughs>